Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome to a third look at how we can help everyone participate in corporate worship. If you're a worship leader like me, one of your desires will be to help as many people as possible in your worship sessions. Enjoy it, be part of it, participate in it, and get something from it. Be mutually edified, strengthened, and then help others through that strengthening. So there's nothing like seeing a whole body of people worship together. But you, <laughs> you may find, as I do, that on any given Sunday, there seems to be a pocket or one or two people who just don't seem to be able to be part of it. And what do we do? So we're going to talk about that today in this edition of the Sunday Sample, episode 37, on behalf of Corporate Worship Matters. And we're going to be talking today in particular about the value or otherwise of ritual. Now, ritual. Ritual has a bit of a negative association with it, but is ritual bad? And I'm going to suggest that ritual in itself is not bad. And before you run screaming for the hills because you think that I've lost the plot, I'm talking about ritual from a particular perspective. You, in fact, I would say that you believe in ritual, whether you think you do or not, because we all have our patterns of worship that are repeated. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. I know you're thinking of, uh, of Matthew 23, aren't you, where Jesus uh, talks to the Pharisees and proclaims that they are hypocrites because they valued the ritual more than the substance. He says, woe to them. You give a tenth of your spices, but you neglect the more important matters of the Lord. Justice, mercy, faithfulness. This is Matthew 23, verses 23 to 27. Uh, he says, woe to you because you clean the outside of the cup, but inside it's dirty. Woe to you because you're like whitewashed tombs. Everything looks good on the outside, but inside it's rotten, is what he's saying. And so is he condemning ritual? I don't think he is condemning ritual. I think he's condemning ritualistic religion, which is different from ritual itself. Ritual is neutral, I would say. I've been looking at some ideas from this book, Participating in Worship by Craig Douglas Erickson, and he has a whole section on ritual, which is really quite interesting. And he suggests that the problem is not so much in our, in our services ritual in itself, but whether we are helping everybody to use the ritual to its best advantage, what he would call synergistic ritualism. That's a bit of a mouthful, but I, I actually it expresses clearly what I think uh, we're aiming for, synergistic ritualism. Now the word synergistic or, comes from the Greek synergos, uh, which we see in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, for example, says, Paul writes, we are God's, uh, we are co-workers. That's the word synergos there. We are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. And so Paul is saying, between, when you and I are working together, we are synergos, we are, we are working together for God's glory. And then that is a good thing. And in our church services, we can work together. The congregation, the, the minister, whoever that may be, the one leading worship, the worship team, we can work together in a, a ritual, using ritual in a synergistic way. So, so when we're in our normal church service settings, the question is not so much whether things are varied enough or not. The question is whether we're really thinking about how to, to knit together the different parts of the congregation, the one leading the worship, the team that might be leading the worship, and the congregation. The problem is not ritual. If you're feeling like things are a bit dead in your church, the likelihood is not that you're just repeating things and saying the ritual is the problem. The likelihood is more there's something else deeper going on. Let me read a section from the book by Erickson. What we're looking for in synergistic ritualism is this, and this is the quote from the book. The total effect is greater than the sum of each agent acting alone. If the person leading the worship was worshipping alone, that would be one thing. If the worship team was worshipping alone, that would be one thing. If the congregation were, in a sense, on their own, or individuals were on their own, that would be one thing. But when you put the whole thing together, the idea is that we have uh, the, the, the total effect is greater than the sum of each agent acting alone. He says this, for ritual to succeed, it must be synergistic, that is, involving persons, church, and liturgy in a cooperative relationship of mutual enrichment. Good phrase that. That's the idea, isn't it? That's the goal of a worship leader, to help there be a cooperative relationship of mutual enrichment. Worship leader, worship team, 
Congregation, mutual enrichment. How does that happen? Well, of course, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit, as Erickson mentions. So what do we need to do? We need to distinguish between ritualistic uh, activity in our church services as opposed to synergistic ritualism. So how do we recognize when we're becoming ritualistic in our church services? In other words, we're going through the motions without the heart and mind engaged. What are some of the things that can create that condition, unfortunately and unintentionally? Well, firstly, um, as a worship leader, picking the wrong songs for the wrong congregation. Some congregations love certain songs and certain types of songs, and they just don't like others. There's no point trying to force your favorites on your congregation. I, I love hymns. I love certain kinds of songs. The Watford Church has a preference for some that I like and they, uh, that they like and I don't like and, and so on. And, and in the Thames Valley Church, there's some things that work and some things that don't. I, I have to be a servant to my congregations. And don't you? Just because you love a song doesn't mean the congregation has to love it. We need to be humble about that. If we're forcing our ch song choice on congregations, uh, that's going to create a ritualistic situation where we're just singing them because we have to sing them, not because they're really connecting with the heart. It might be the style of the song. It might be the substance of the song. It might be uh, the, the way they're instrumented. It may be the fact that certain songs are difficult for a congregation to sing. Let's be humble about that. Another thing that can be a problem is moral failure. If we're not ourselves close to God, how can we lead others to be close to God? If we ourselves have sin in our lives we're not dealing with, how can we possibly lead others in corporate worship? I'm not talking about the odd things that happen, but when we know there's something that needs repentance, when we know soberness is needed and we refuse to go there, we're going to be, in effect, being ritualistic, doing the, the activities of a worship leader, but without the heart. That's a second possible problem. A third possible problem is that we have a structure to our church services that worked for our congregation 10 years ago, but actually doesn't work for us anymore. And we've held on to that structure because it's comfortable. Uh, it worked for us in the past and we think it should work for us now, even though it doesn't seem to be. Let's persevere. But now our worship has become ritualistic. There's no synergy. There's no synergy between congregation, worship leader, worship team of all working together to create something that is greater than the individual parts working alone. Something that will create a cooperative relationship of mutual enrichment. Here's something for us to think about. Ritual isn't the problem. Ritualistic religion is, but synergistic ritualism is a goal we can achieve. That means knowing what works for our congregations and what they need. Doing a survey, asking questions, and in the worship team, as a worship leader, working together and knowing what the congregation needs and working at that and not, not giving up if things aren't quite where you want them to be, if, if the full participation isn't there yet or not there most of the time. That's okay, but let's look for the individual issues that we could work on and develop such that the congregation are delighted by what we lead them in, and we are delighted in that response, and God is delighted uh, in everything that we do. Don't abandon your ritual just because it is a ritual. That's not the issue. Think about what it is the issue, which is ritualistic religion the activity without the heart and the mind involved. Be clear uh, with your congregation as to why each part of the service is there. What is the prayer for? What is the communion for? If the congregation don't know that, they won't engage. You may need to teach on the value of ritual and the dangers of being ritualistic. Well, what do you think about this issue of ritual? I would like to know. If you could leave me a comment, that would be wonderful. Leave it um, in, in the comment box below, because then we can see each other's comments, and we learn best when we learn in community. Please pass the link to this recording on to one other person that might benefit. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and any other button that will increase the visibility of these uh, recordings, because then more people will benefit. At least that's our prayer and our hope. And until the next time you gather with the saints to worship, with your worship team, with you as a worship leader, with your congregation for the best synergistic uh, ritualism that you can achieve, I pray that you will worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Take care and God bless. You.